Hey guys, welcome back to Ben and Brewing's channel. If you haven't been here before, we do product reviews, tutorials, and we have a live chat feature on our website uh, to help you through any of your Rude 911s. Today's video is all about refractometers. We're going to cover what they are, when to use them, when not to use them, very important, and how to calibrate them. Check it out. All right guys, so before we get into it, uh, just a quick note. We're doing an in-depth coverage of the refractometer. If you're just looking for a quick and easy start guide to get up and running as quick as possible, we have a five minute video we did linked below that'll get you up and running quickly. For those of you that are here for kind of the long form and wanna see some detail, let's get to it. All right guys, first and foremost, let's talk about what a refractometer is. You've probably seen these around your homebrew stores. Maybe you already use one. These were originally used to measure concentrations of salt in seawater. Uh, the wine industry took them up and they used them to measure uh, dissolved concentrations of sugar in their must or in their grape juice. And obviously brewers use it too to measure the sugar concentrations in their wort. All right guys, let's talk about how to recalibrate your refractometer. There's a couple of times when you want to do this to make sure it's reading accurately. First and foremost is when you get it from wherever you bought it from. Uh, it's been in shipping, it's been traveling, it's been shaking, so it's probably gonna be out of alignment, so you wanna make sure that you calibrate it at that point. From then forward, I recommend doing it at least once a year. Uh, if you're brewing a lot, do it more than that, just to make sure that it's accurate. If you tend to be a little rough on these guys and knock them around, you put it in a brew drawer and you're opening and closing and it's just kind of rattling and rocking, that can throw things out of alignment as well. So make sure you keep it accurate. There's two ways to do it. First and foremost is with distilled water. You want to use distilled water and not reverse osmosis and not spring water because the minerals in there can really throw off the readings. So we have distilled water, we have our refractometer, I have an eyedropper, and for this particular model, uh, a screwdriver to help calibrate it. Take your refractometer, take your distilled water, and if you've been using it for any length of time, you know the drill on how to do a sample. Close the plate, make sure there's no air bubbles in there, that it's a nice, uh, even coating on the glass, and then you point it towards a natural source of light. Uh, you really don't want to use any other sources of light because it can throw off the reading slightly. Natural light is the best way to do it. And as I look at this, I can see we're a couple of points off because it should be reading at one. If you're using distilled water and you got it on the plate, it should say one. If it doesn't, in this particular model, take our screwdriver, I'm gonna stick it in the top there, and get it to one. So now it's calibrated. The other method that you can use to calibrate, and this can also depend on how accurate your refractometer is through the entire scale of gravity that it's reading. Um, a lot of things are kind of measured on a curve, so they tend to be less accurate if you're measuring it at the extreme end versus where you actually function and do your measurements. So the other way you can do it that's very accurate, you take a known gravity of wort. So you take your dry malt extract, you mix it with a specific volume of water, and you know that equals 1050. Then you can put that sample on the refractometer and tune it to 1050. The benefit of doing that is you try to keep it within the range of beers that you're really measuring. So, you know, between 1040 and 1080, you can kind of do an average and pick a, a range to really calibrate. And that makes sure that it's really accurate, especially in the ranges that you're brewing. Okay, let's talk about some of the pros and cons of using a refractometer. So some of the cons, um, they're not as accurate as a hydrometer. Um, there's several factors that can cause the readings to be slightly skewed. Um, they're not as temperature sensitive, which is a good thing, uh, but your turbidity, how cloudy your wart is that you're measuring can throw off the readings. Lighter versus darker beer can throw off the readings a little bit too. Now, we're not talking about any orders of magnitude, we're talking about maybe a point or two, so it's not really a huge deal depends on how specific you are with your specific gravity readings uh, but generally they're good to use because you don't need this giant sample you don't have to fill up an entire graduated cylinder and chill it down to 60 or 65 degrees so that your hydrometer will measure correctly it's a huge time saver you can take multiple samples you're not wasting a lot of beer um, and really helps speed up a brew day to make sure that you're on track and hitting your numbers so the question is is what point during your brew day should you be using one of these well 
There's a couple of places. Uh, when you're in your mash, you can be measuring your mash specific gravity. Not quite as important as it does the conversion, but you can certainly measure that. The bigger area is when you're doing your runoff, when you're sparging out. Measuring the outflow from your mash into your boil kettle is extremely important. You really want to maximize your efficiency, so you measure the outflow as it's coming out, and you really don't want it to get to below uh, a 1010 specific gravity, because when that happens, it changes the pH of your mash, it tends to get a little bit more, I believe it's acidic, and that pulls tannins and things from your wort. It might be alkaline, I'll have to look that up. Either way, it's bad. Because uh, if you fall below there, it extracts tannins from your husk, which you really don't want in your finished beer. So that's a great quick way you can do samples as you're getting closer and closer right up until you're finished mashing out. It's also helpful pre-boil gravity. You can check it and see, do I need to boil a little bit longer to get down to my specific gravity, or I'm not gonna hit it, I need to boost it with a little bit of extract. Uh, and then your post-boil gravity, you can check it and make sure that you did hit your volume and the gravity that you need with a little sample, not temperature dependent. What we do after that, get it chilled down, put it into the fermenter, uh, and then we used to use a, a hydrometer. So we take the full sample, the beer's cooled to 60, 65 degrees, which is in that hydrometer range so that it's accurate to get an accurate reading before we pitch the yeast and start turning it into beer. What we do now is actually use a tilt hydrometer. So once we get it chilled and in the fermenter, we drop that thing in, we take our initial reading. They're very, very accurate uh, and it really has helped us. If you're interested in the tilt hydrometer, we did a full in-depth review. Links are below. It's not necessarily something that everyone's going to need for the brew day. For us, we love it. So just make sure you check it out. Okay, so you're excited, you've got your refractometer, you wanna use it to measure every single stage of your brewing process. Yeah, hold that thought though. Um, these aren't really good to measure every single stage, and I'll tell you why. So these use refraction to measure the dissolved concentrations of salt or sugar or anything like that, but it uses a base of water to make those measurements. As Soon as you pitch yeast into your wort, technically it's no longer wort, it's beer, and there's potential for alcohol to be in there. So as soon as it starts producing alcohol, that dilutes down the water that's in your base beer, and it throws off the readings of your refractometer. There are online calculators that you can use that are supposed to be able to adjust and make it accurate, even with the presence of alcohol. I have not found one that really works accurately for me. I haven't done a ton of research on it. So if there is one that you use that you like, please comment below so we can share it with other brewers and let them know that this is an option during fermentation or post fermentation. If you really want to get an accurate measurement, once you pitch the yeast, you got to either use like a tilt hydrometer or some sort of floating hydrometer like we use, which we love, or do old school and just use a hydrometer. A floating hydrometer, take a full sample, get a very accurate reading of it. Thanks for watching our refractometer tutorial. Hopefully it brought you some value. If it did, we would appreciate if you'd hit that like and subscribe button to keep this wonderful content coming. Also check out coming soon, there may be a podcast in our future. Check out the Hot Break Beer Cast. It's your favorite podcast host. Thanks, my friends. Until next time.